Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, I just I just got in from my three hour uh, bus ride from Seoul down to uh, my city here in Gwangju, and um, yeah, I just got done at the uh, Gundam Expo with Zach and uh, and hanging out and all that stuff the night before, so I'm pretty tired. <laughs> But I figured I, I owe it to you guys to at least put some kind of content out for you guys to see. So um, I figured I'd do a, a kind of like a really quick one take, uh, if, if I can make it in one take, of uh, the haul that uh, I brought back with me. So um, yeah, let's just get right to it. So that's pretty much my haul, <laughs> in a nutshell. And yeah, my house is a mess, but whatever. <laughs> so I figured I kind of broke it up into gunplay related stuff on the left and non gunplay related stuff on the right. So I figured I'd get the non gunplay related stuff out of the way first. Um, and then we'll take it from there. So anyway, uh, first item on the list is this tripod. <laughs> um, this is made by a company called uh, Vanguard, and uh, this is this is actually model VK204 AP. Um, and I picked this up because it comes with a really nice uh, head, and on top of that, it weighs a little over uh, a little over two pounds. Um, it's a full-size tripod, so um, you know. Three stack, three stack leg extension, um, and it you know it goes up way higher than you know, like your neck, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's it's really really light for the actual size um, that it can extend to. Um, so I picked that up at the Yodabashi for uh, I think something like 30, 3200 yen. It was it was like thirty bucks. It was really cheap for something so light. Um, so yeah, I picked that up because it's a solid, solid tripod. It'll be really great for traveling and stuff like that. So grab that. So um, yeah, I really recommend this um, if you guys are looking for something. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway. Next, um, you're gonna notice that there's a lot of stuff that's kind of related to uh, skincare. <laughs> So a lot of this stuff is obviously for summer, but uh, I picked up some sun sunscreen for her because she doesn't like like the really oily type of sunscreen. So uh, I picked that up for her. Um, um, Skin Aqua, this is like expensive. It was like nine, 900 yen, it was like a $9 bottle. But yeah, there's that. And then she already uses this stuff. This is uh, some kind of toner. And uh, I just got the bulk packaging because you get a lot more instead of paying for less and getting like a bottle. She already has the bottle, so she'll probably just fill it up with this. So got two packs of those refills, and then this is like the actual like lotion. So two packs of that. These were like six, seven hundred yen each. Now this is something that I always pick up whenever I go to Japan. Um, uh, it's made by a company called Roto. I'm pretty sure you can get this in the US, but they don't, it's not available in South Korea. But uh, basically, um, it's like basically eye mint. It's mint for your eyes. So if you have really tired eyes, um, it has, I don't know, I, I, I don't want to call it menthol, but kind of like a menthol-esque uh, experience. So one drop will do it. It'll just kind of cool your eyes and kind of uh, refresh your tired eyes. So. Um, I actually came across this when I was in college, um, and this really, really helped. So if you ever um, happen to come across any Roto products, that's R-O-H-T-O, uh, these, oh, and I, they have different like varying levels of coolness, and I always get the really, really crazy strong ones, but uh, you can get them in milder flavors, but yeah. These are my jam. I have a I have another bottle somewhere else that I actually cracked open, but yeah, there's that. Uh, got nasal spray. Um, all of this I took out of the packaging because they came in boxes and plastic pockets, 
packaging and stuff like that, but I needed to save some weight on my uh, check baggage, so I took them all out of the box. But this is basically nasal spray for the upcoming winter and spring months. So uh, yeah, decongestant nasal spray, love this stuff. Really, really helps. And this is probably stuff that you guys are not interested in, but yeah, this is like waterproof eyeliner as well as uh, mascara. So yeah, that's, you know, uh, you know, maybe we could panel line with that. <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on. I don't know, I read somewhere online that this would actually help you with like your acne problems. It's basically uh, some kind of like cream, creamy foam. Um, you just kind of put it on for if you got like your if you got some pimples or whatever. So uh, I figured I'd pick that up for uh, those trouble days for summer. I don't know, just some some thoughtfulness there. <laughs> uh, next, these were for me, and I gotta tell you, these were a godsend. I swear, oh my goodness. So. Uh, it's labeled really strange. Uh, it's called Gatsby Facial Paper, and they have another one for the. They have another one for the body. This is another one of. Uh, this is the same exact thing. Uh, only this one's not opened. Uh, they have another one I have somewhere. Um, but yeah, basically, for kind of like wiping down your face when you're all disgusting and hot and sweaty, and they have. A ridiculous a ridiculous amount of menthol in them so for those really hot days and you're just kind of sitting there like sweating uh, you wipe you wipe your face and it's got this crazy amount of menthol and for me right now um, I kind of have a buzz cut so I was just wiping my whole head down and I swear the whole my whole head felt like I just stuck it in, in a in a refrigerator it was just cool the rest of the day um, it lasts a good like couple hours like the coolness of this so this was an absolute godsend I love this especially because I was sweating so much in Tokyo um, So they have this for the face and then they have another one for kind of just like wiping down your arms and your neck and um, You know like up, all up under your shirt when you're all disgusting and sweaty um, They have a, another one just for your body um, They had like a lemon scent so like it was basically like deodorant wet wipes and it was that that was amazing too um so yeah it really really came in um came in handy so it was that and eve quick uh this is basically japanese tylenol works really well uh i had some really bad foot pain after walking around so much i was doing a good like i don't know some anywhere between eight and ten miles a day just walking with a heavy ass backpack and stuff so there was that um this uh, I always buy at least once a year uh, this is for your mosquito bites and it basically just kind of uh, cools the area down kind of uh, brings down the the swelling and itchiness of your mosquito bites works really well love it um, this I'm pretty sure that some of y'all would love to have in the US um, what this is is basically there are these little patches you put on top of your canker sores inside your mouth and that's it. It'll cover it up. You can eat. Um, you don't have to worry about any eating anything that's acidic or citric, uh, or that's got any citrus in it, because uh, then it'll just really burn and stuff like that. Works really well. Um, I don't know. Sometimes you get it for when you're like really tired and stressed out, but works really well. I highly recommend this stuff. Um, so yeah, a lot of the stuff uh, I just picked picked up at. Uh, yeah, I forgot. I forgot. It was like. Yashimoto something some drugstore. I forget uh, you buy more than 50 bucks worth you get uh, duty-free so and then this is the ever popular Senka brand perfect way for uh, It's a it's basically a facial cleanser. So um, So for any of you guys who have you know wives girlfriends and you guys are planning to go to Japan uh, This is some of the stuff that I typically pick up at a drugstore I know most people would probably just be like, oh, kumpla, 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 but, you know, there's other things that you could also get that is pretty, it's pretty awesome to get in Japan. But anyway, uh, I think the last of the non-gumpla stuff is this. Uh, this is a whetstone. It's got two sides to it. It's huge. It's heavy. I had to carry, put it in my carry-on because it's so heavy. Um, but, yeah, um... 
One side is a little bit more coarse, this side being a little bit more fine. Um, I'm going to be using this for sharpening my knives and chisels, um, so that'll, that'll come in handy for doing that. Uh, I do plan on doing a chisel sharpening video eventually, so stay tuned for that. But I at least have a proper chisel this time with a non-slip uh, surface uh, holder thing. So, uh, yeah, pretty excited to get to use using that. So that's it in terms of non-Gunpla related stuff. And just kind of move on to the Gunpla stuff. Um, I picked up one set of decals because you can never... Uh, you can never have enough uh, white, gray decals, so these are obviously the 1144 scale uh, Haiku um, deca decals. So, you know, that's uh, an example of the designs that they have, which is pretty cool. I like, I like, I like Haiku stuff. They don't rip very well, and they're pretty high quality, I would say. So, uh, so yeah, there's that. Uh, moving forward, uh, MS Tank. One says this this was a little pricey for my days. It was six bucks, six hundred yen. But you know, some tanks and stuff like that. So um, yeah, just some parts I could use. Nothing too crazy. Um, most a lot of the tools and stuff that I bought um, and accessories I bought was at uh, Hobby Paradise uh, Volks, to be specific. So uh, that's like right off the right off the the cuff of. Um, uh, a Kiabra station, but I picked up two of these 3M uh, 3M sandpaper is probably the best that I've ever used um, And I was surprised at how cheap these were so these are only 70 70 yen a sheet so uh, Yeah, 70 cents each it's really cheap so two sheets of 1500 two sheets of 1200 and I think like three or four sheets of these 800 grit ones because I go through 800 grit a lot faster than any of the other uh, grits. So these are really cheap, um, high quality. They're waterproof. So uh, you know, I just make my own sanding sticks uh, with some double-sided tape and stuff. So uh, yeah, glad I got that. And so uh, let's finish off with um, just like the tools and stuff first, and then I'll move on to gumpla. So uh, yeah, high uh, carving tape. This stuff is great. I have the six millimeter variant of this, but uh, I don't have the 3mm, so I ended up buying these. Um, I still have the 6mm that I got last year, and it's still lasting me a while, so I don't, I probably don't have to buy any more of these after today, at least not for a while, but um, I reckon maybe in a couple years later, if I go back to Japan, I'll pick up another couple rolls. Uh, these two I picked up, uh, this one I picked up at, I think, Mandarake. Uh, in 2007, this is the first grade Zaku um, pachin uh, pachinko slot Gundam. Um, yeah, I just I just wanted to pick pick these first grades up so I could kind of do some fun little projects with them. Uh, this one I picked up at Volks as well. This was half the price of this. This was 500. This was 240. So anyway, pick these up and. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just gonna use them for some uh, projects and stuff later on. I gotta move some of the stuff away. Uh, forgot, there's more tools. Alright, BMC. Uh, I have a couple of their chisels, and they seem to have moved forward with a different style of chisel tip, which uh, can be good or bad depending on how you like your chisels. But the older ones, the chisel tips actually had like their own like kind of like really thin like little handle thing so they were like they were this long anyway to begin with um, but now they've kind of come up with these handles and shorter chisel tips so uh, I figured I might as well just give these a shot so I picked this one this was like 570 yen which is not that bad for a handle because other joints other like not even like name or known brands they sell their uh, handles for something like 22 30 dollars like that so um I, f I felt that was actually pretty reasonable they come with little stickers so you can label um label the the handle if you don't want to constantly be swapping them out so uh pretty cool um anyway 
Moving forward, I picked up uh, some chisel heads. Now, as I mentioned before, the chisels are a lot, they're not as long as they, how they used to be. They used to be probably like that long, so you didn't have to put a handle on there. You can just kind of hold it in your hand and use it, but now they have a shortened thing with a separate handle that you can use. So, yeah, I picked up um, 1.2 millimeter and 0.6. They were sold out of point, point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4, point 0.5. They were all sold out. Um, and the thing with Volks is, because these are such high demand products, um, they actually limited uh, one per customer. So you couldn't, you couldn't go in there and buy, you know, two or three of these each. Um, these were actually on sale. They're, they were originally 3,600 yen each. And uh, upon checking the receipt, I, f I found out that they were actually like half that. These were 1,800 a pop, which is actually really cheap for BNC chisels. Um, those of you who have bought them before, this, you're probably hating me right now because I picked up two chisel heads for 1800 which is like $18. <laughs> it's like a, a quarter of the cost of what you would pay anywhere else. So I was really happy about that. Um, I was just going to bite the bullet and pay, you know, th 36 or whatever, but uh, I kind of lucked out. So yeah, that's, uh, that's it in terms of the chisels. Uh, found these God Hand uh, sanding, sanding sponges. These are 4,000, 8, uh, 6,000, 8,000, and 10,000 grit. Uh, I just kind of wanted to see what the hoopla was about, about, um, you know, how people were kind of raving about how shiny they were getting their parts. So I forgot to give it a shot, you know, see, see if it really is as good, uh, product, at least the God Hands sanding products are. So, got that. I uh, picked up a, this one was exactly as priced, it's 3,800 yen, 38 bucks roughly, uh, this is a chamfer tool, um, I make my own but I wa kind of wanted to try these out because I've never, uh, I never tried them out and they sell these for like $80 here in Korea and I found this same exact one for 38 so I was like, ah, you know what, that's not too bad, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to use these for, you know, creating those, uh, turning them seams into you know, <laughs> into scribes and stuff like that. So that's uh, that's in terms. That's it in terms of scribing materials. And then last but not least, in terms of tools, a T ruler. Uh, these are surprisingly hard to find, at least uh, where I'm from. But this one, this particular one, is made by Wave, and it's a little bit cheaper than the Mr. Hobby uh, equivalent, which was the same exact size. But that one was selling for like 3,200 yen. So. This was like a third of that cost, eleven fifty. So, uh, yeah, um, I'm just gonna use this for cutting plot plate and um, measuring stuff out and whatnot. So, gonna use that. Um, this probably would have come in really handy uh, when I was kind of doing some plot plate work earlier on my gym custom, which I'm still not done with yet. But yeah, I'm gonna use that. So, yeah, that's it in terms of tools. Moving on, uh, we have our kits. So uh, I picked up a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, including the two first grades. Um, so yeah, I found uh, I found that the bulk of my stuff that I liked the pricing of was probably found at Mandarake in terms of used products. So this is a um, what is it Genki. Kinky Hobby Magazine? Yeah. Uh, this is a mag magazine limited edition thingamajiggy. Uh, this is actually a 1-200 scale. Um, uh, yeah, Hazel. <laughs> uh, these are really hard to find. And so I was pretty excited when I saw these. So this one, uh, this particular one. And so I figured I'd pick it up. It was really cheap. It was, it was five bucks. But... Uh, yeah, I just uh, figured it'd be cool to kind of work with something, uh, something as cool as this, something out of the blue. Um, not not a very new kit. This came out like 2004, I believe. Yeah, it's a 2004 edition. But uh, yeah, figured it'd be kind of kind of fun to fun to play around with and stuff like that. So yeah, gonna tackle this project later on. Moving forward. Uh, oh, these are not kits, but I found these on the street. Uh, this is a ridiculously large 
fidget spinner. It's the size of my hand. Maybe, maybe a standard MG box for comparison. Um, yeah, it's just really big. I figured it'd be fun to kind of just for the novelty of it. This is four to four dollars cheaper than what you would pay for a normal fidget spinner in the U.S. Anyway, so uh, yeah, I'll put that put that aside. Uh, picked up these two uh, from Gotcha Machines. Uh, this one I found in Ami Ami inside the Radio Kaikan in Akiba, and then this one I got in front of the uh, Gundam. What is it? Uh, the Gundam Cafe at Diver City in front of the Unicorn. So. Uh, yeah, I got the blue one. I was really happy about that. And this one, this green one is the nicer of the green ones in Series 4. So they have Series 4 in the clutch machines now. So, um, yeah, and I noticed a lot more shops, uh, a lot more gotcha, gotcha pawn shops were carrying these. Because last year when I went and these first released, uh, every single gotcha machine was sold out. But there are now more and more gotcha machines that have Exceed Head. So I'm really, really happy about that. So, um, yeah, if you happen to go to Japan, there's plenty of Exceed Heads. For 500 yen, you could go to a store and they'll sell them for like 50, 50, 500, 600 yen a pop. But yeah, gotcha machines, they're the bomb. <laughs> so yeah, just add that to my collection. And this baby, whoo, I was so excited because I had never seen one uh, in South Korea. So yeah, uh, I found this at uh, Mandarake in Akiba. Um, this one retails for 5,800 yen, and you can see the price there that it sold for 6,000 yen. So I'm okay, totally okay with paying $2 above retail price for a kit like this. So really, really cool. Because, um, I mean, I paid you'd pay 60 bucks for a normal release uh, Psycho Gundam. Uh, in South Korea anyway, so I was just like, hey, what the hell, why not? So, yeah, I got this, pretty sweet. Um, I'm really excited because uh, I have, I do have a Psycho Gundam, but I kind of want to build this one and just kind of detail it up a little bit. I'm not going to do too, you know, too many modifications or anything, but it's a cool looking kit, so, um, yeah, definitely excited for, for this one from the Build Fighters line. Um, so yeah, uh, I mean at Mandarake, I actually they actually had two, and I picked up one, and I went back to the same Mandarake in Akiba uh, two days later, and this one this one was gone. the The turnover rate for a lot of kits there is really really fast. So um, if you see one, don't assume that it'll be there when you go back later. So just pick it up. That's one thing uh, you guys should definitely know about Mandarake. Um, if if you see it, hold on to it and buy it, because outside of that, you're you're going to be screwed. Uh, Mandarake also does offer duty-free for purchases of over uh, 5,000 yen, which is about $50. So, um, so yeah, I got my, I think, like $9 back on this because um, they they waive the... If you pay with your card, like I pay for with my, with my Visa, um, and they'll just give you like the 8% of this price that you paid over uh, back to you in cash. So, um, duty-free, great. <laughs> Um, and the last three kits, uh, which all happen to be the same one. The uh, box is a little bit dented because of travel and my luggage. This is the only one that survived unscathed, but, uh, yeah. So, this one is, I'm probably going to keep for myself. Um, but basically, yeah, it's three of the Gym Sniper 2 clear color editions that are only sold at Gundam from Tokyo. Uh, I picked up three because... One for myself, one for a giveaway, and this other one I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. Um, but, I don't know, I might just keep two. Who knows? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, they're hard to find in Korea. They're hard to find really anywhere. So I just I ended up picking up three. Um, and they were, like, after I picked up these three, there were only something like four or five left. Um, yeah, and they actually limit you to, like, five kits if you want to buy, like, any of the Bandai uh, like the GFT limited, uh, releases and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I picked these up at retail for 3,800, uh, yen a piece. So, um, these are easily going for 50, 60, 70, or in, outside of Japan. Um, even in Korea, I saw some guys selling them for like 70. Um, so, fuck those guys. <laughs> anyway, um, 
So yeah, I think that's about it for this haul. Um, let me know what you guys think. Kind of, oh, um, what do you guys think of this haul? Um, I, I kind of didn't go too crazy in terms of like the kits and stuff like that. I thought I, I, I think I went pretty modest compared to other years or other times. This is my third time back in Japan and. A year and a half, two years almost. So, uh, I found a great deal on the airplane tickets. So, um, yeah. Anyway, this haul video is gonna be released to you guys uh, way ahead of my Japan videos. So, um, stay tuned for that. There's there's a lot of content. There's, I filled my 128 gig uh, SD card on my DSLR, and I actually had to move uh, via Bluetooth a lot of the footage from this camera into my phone. Um, and then that way I could delete delete some of the footage on the SD card. So um, thank God for technology. I, I really didn't expect to fill my 128 gig uh, gig SD card. But um, anyway, yeah, stay tuned for that. Hope this whole video was kind of fun and informative, and um, I don't know, I guess interesting. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's about it. So I will catch you guys later. Stay tuned for more content and. Uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!